because that's the best way to celebrate Women's History Month, right? Pitting women against each other. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jayla and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be celebrating Women's History Month, which I should be doing all month, but like specifically today I'm making a video about it. I thought it'd be really fun if I talked about my favorite badass female protagonist with you guys, and there are quite a few, so we got a bit of a list here. I know this probably isn't a very original video idea or whatever, I'm sure many people have done this, but this video idea came to me from reading The Space Between Worlds by Makaya Johnson, and I just finished it the other day, and wow! I just, I love that book. It was so good. I love the main character, Kara. She is so cool. She's been through a lot, so she's got, like, you know, she's got a dark side and everything. But she's determined. She's a survivor. And if you don't know what the book is about, it's basically about her traveling through universes as a job because she's one of the rare people who, like, dies a lot in her other universes. And so it gives her the opportunity to move between those worlds because you can only go to worlds where you have died. So the Kara that we follow around in this book, she is... She's kind of the one of few who are left of her, and she is just such a survivor, like she's determined to live, and I have to respect it, so that's why I wanted to make this video, and she's my number one person on this list. It's not ranked, by the way, um, but I, like, she's just the, you know, I'm trying to segue here. So, <laughs> one of my favorite female protagonists is Kara from The Space Between Worlds. I think that she is really wise, she's really, like like I said, she's been through a lot and so she sees the world for what it is and she's not very optimistic about everything. She's very pragmatic and she's just really been through some shit and so she does not waste time and I just appreciate that about her. Um, not only is she tough as in she like sticks up for herself, she knows how to fight if she needs to, she's also really resourceful and she knows how to outsmart people. And that's one of my favorite types of protagonists, someone, they don't have to be super tough, they don't have to know how to fight everybody, but if they like know how to think and they know how to really outsmart their opponent, that is something I really love in a protagonist. Another really resourceful queen who knows how to fight is Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. Katniss Everdeen is probably my favorite protagonist of all time because I am a Hunger Games simp. But, you know, just like I grew up with her, she's someone to admire. She really embodied in my adolescence just that kind of girl who knows how to stick up for herself. She's a protector. She is a survivor. She will do whatever it takes to do what's right for her family. And I appreciate that about her. Kara and Katniss are very similar in the way that they grew up in a place that really just does not allow them to become something more. And so they get these... I mean, I wouldn't call the Hunger Games an opportunity. <laughs> it's not the positive opportunity, but like these things that change their lives and they only get better and stronger. They don't stop being badass. They don't stop really fighting for the right thing. And I really like that about them. I'm not gonna give Katniss points for being super smart though, because it, we have to do the love triangle and it's very obvious who the winner of the love triangle is if she just thought about it a little bit, but it took her three books, so. It's fine. It's whatever. Another one of my favorite badass females is Jane McKean from the Dread Nation duology. Jane is smart. She knows how to fight, even though like the circumstances of her knowing how to fight are kind of shitty and not okay. But she knows how to defend herself. She knows how to protect other people. She literally started from the bottom and now she's very badass. So I think that's what I can say about the first three so far. They started from the bottom and now they're here. They started from the bottom and now they're on this list which I guess is the top. But yeah, I love Jane. She won't take shit from anyone. She's funny. Um, she's very flirty too. I like that about her. I like all of my, I like my flirty protagonists. Something about living vicariously through them because I, I am very flirty, but I'm also not flirty in the way that gets across that I'm flirting. It's, it's a whole thing. That's really tragic. So I need to start taking notes from them on how to do it because they're more straightforward than I am. Okay, so I just googled how to say this name because I always feel like I'm saying it wrong, but I definitely don't think you should say it like this. So the name I'm saying is Maris or Maris or Maurice. Hmm. Maurice. I just don't agree. I like Maris better. And it's spelled in a pretty way. You probably can't see it. It's spelled really pretty, and so it should sound prettier than Maurice. No offense to the Maurice's out there. It's not that it's not a pretty name. It's just not like... They, they don't match. The look of it and the sound of it don't match. But anyway, I'm talking about Maris or Maurice Boudreaux from the Ring Shout novella story thing, which is about a woman who is fighting demons who have infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan and so obviously that sounds badass in itself. She's got two other partners with her and they all kind of just take down little demons. I like, I can't remember specifically what about her made her so badass to me because I remember her, one of the people, one of her friends who was also fighting demons was really, really good with a gun. I know it wasn't her, but it was her friend. And then another one of them was really good with something else or just a good tracker or something like that. I don't remember what about her made her special, so I don't, it's not really, I can't really describe it fully why she should be on this list. 
but she's kind of like the main bitch in charge and I respect her. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going head to head with the KKK, especially if there's demons involved by myself or like with only two other people. So I think she deserves to be on this list regardless. Something funny that I realized I've done with this character and with Kara from Space Between Worlds and with Jane from the Dread Nation books is that I imagine them all looking very similar. Um, I don't know why. They're definitely all different ages and everything, but I don't know. I just picture this one goddess-like woman who sits in for all of them and when I put them in my head and I don't know she's really I want to be her friend she seems like a really cool gal but they're all very different in their own ways but they're also not next I have Kestrel Trajan from the Winner's Curse trilogy which honestly is underrated and a lot more people should read it I love those books it's one of my favorite trilogies of all time Kestrel is the general's daughter and she lives a very sheltered life she's got all these privileges but also because she's the general's daughter she's not She's expected to be very tough, she's expected to know how to fight, and she's expected to like just be really good at combat. Unfortunately, she's not good at those things. She is an artist, she likes music, and she likes to use her brain. And so what I really like about Kestrel is that she is so smart and so strategic. Unfortunately, she's not the best fighter, but she is always one step ahead of everybody else. We see this a lot with her playing board games in the books or coming up with plans and stuff like that. And I love those scenes where you just, like, she doesn't let you in on exactly what she's gonna do, which is so frustrating. It reminds me of like, what's her face? Those, those, those girls in those books. It reminds me of Aelin from that book except less annoying because she doesn't tell you anything about what she's going to do until it's already playing out. Kestrel just has a really great big brain and I love seeing it in action and I love how she comes up with her plans and just how she outsmarts everyone in the room with her. Next we have Captain Ziala from Black Sun and if you don't love a loud rowdy just drunk I mean you shouldn't encourage alcoholism so minus the drunkness but I just thought it was funny. Anyway Captain Ziala she is heroic um, she really like leads. Obviously she's a captain, so she's used to being roles of leadership, but she really takes charge, especially. So she's the captain of a ship that's like the whole crew is men. And so there's all this stuff that she has to think about as a woman trying to man this ship. She knows how to stick up for herself, especially in these odds where everyone thinks she can't do it because she's a woman. I can't remember how much of a spoiler it is to say, but like her origin is really interesting and it just makes me happy to be a woman because it's very cool. So I'm not gonna say it because I don't remember if it's like something that's revealed or if it's just something we know going into it. But if you're reading the book, which you should be if you're watching this channel because read Black Sun. It is so good. Then you'll know what I'm talking about as far as like where she's from. So yeah. She's also badass because she's openly queer and she's not everyone is open to that in the many societies and stuff she visits throughout the book. And so she doesn't care and she loves who she loves and I love that about her. She really only cares about getting off and honestly much respect, I can relate. So next we have two queens, we've got Inej Gatha and we have Nina Zinnick from the Six of Crows duology. If you've not read those books, where you've been, you should read them. They're amazing and the female characters in these books are amazing. Inej is just very stealthy, she's a spy for the dregs which is if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's kind of this crew or like gang that she belongs to. She has a history in acrobatics and so she's very flexible, she's really limber and nimble. Limber? Is that the word I meant to say? Nimble? I don't know. She's so brave and she's also been through a lot, but she cares so deeply about other people. And <laughs> I just love her so much. And Nina's great too. She has powers and she, <laughs> I don't know why I love Nina so much. She's funny and she's feisty and she is very flirtatious as well. And yeah, she knows how to stick up for herself. And that's one of the things I really enjoyed about the books is her standing up for herself. She's had it rough in the past too. And so it's really hard to be through so many things and then still come out of it being just so fun and so like so enjoyable and not taking life too seriously and so I really enjoy that about her as well and she deserves better is all I'm gonna say about that okay now we have Karu from Daughter of Smoke and Bone picture this white girl blue hair tattoos she like looks 17 or whatever um, she's got like deep black eyes, not brown, but black. Now tell me, without lying, that that doesn't look badass to you, because it is. I love Karu because she's mysterious, she's really funny, she's not afraid of anything, which like reasons, but whatever, and she will stab you if necessary, but hopefully not necessary. She likes to do things without resorting to violence first, which I can respect, I love that about her. She's very sensible, but she's also optimistic, and so she prefers to do things without having to kill people but sometimes you have to get people killed to get what you want, and she understands that. I feel like I'm painting her as some sort of assassin. She's not an assassin, she's just a girl, and she's in love with a boy, and 
things ensue. By the way, if I'm telling you about this book, it means you should read it because they wouldn't be a favorite protagonist if the book sucked. So make sure that you're reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which is what Carew is from. Make sure you're reading Six of Crows. Make sure you're reading The Winner's Curse and all those other books that I said before because they're all so good. Okay, so then I have Lada Dracul from the, uh, I forgot what it's called, The Conqueror Saga. It's those books that Kirsten White wrote um, about the gender bent Vlad the Impaler. So I don't know if you remember those, were, they were really popular back in the day, back in the day, um, a few years ago. And I really, really enjoyed that. It was a trilogy. I really enjoyed that trilogy because it's a gender bent Vlad the Impaler and Vlad the Impaler is known for being very ruthless. Lotta, who is the main character, is very ruthless. And it was always interesting to see what her limits were because she had very few limits. <laughs> she really did. She was honestly badass to the point of frustration sometimes because she was so bloodthirsty. She only cared about like getting to her goals. And so... I still really like her as a character. Well, no, actually, I like her as a female protagonist, if that makes sense, but I would not want to be friends with her. I would not really want to hang out with her. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if she's really on this favorites list because she's one of my favorite characters or because she's just really cool and she really goes after what she wants. She will kill whoever she wants to kill just to get what she wants, and she does that up until the end of the story. I also have on this list Alana from the Saga... Saga? <laughs> From the saga books, the graphic novels, she is a mother, so automatically badass. I don't read enough about mothers, apparently, and they're as badass as it gets. So Alana is a mother. She's protecting her child from intergalactic war and all these people that are coming after them. And she's filthy mouth, she's loud, and she knows what she wants. She actually doesn't, I don't know if she's the strongest fighter. Like, I know she can shoot a gun, but she was in the military at some point and, like, it just was not for her. She's not... She doesn't know how to treat people poorly, I guess, which is not something you need to be a badass at all. And then Micah Halfwolf is another female protagonist from a graphic novel series that I like. She's from the Monstrous series. And my poor baby, that girl's been through so much. <laughs> she is continuing to go through it as these books go on, not even just in her past and her background, but she is coming through it all and hopefully it's not going down too dark a path. So Micah is very powerful but she's also very cynical and selfish, but honestly, she deserves to be. She's a natural born leader, but she doesn't want any other responsibilities. So it's really interesting to see that dynamic between her selfishness and being a, an actual leader in this big giant war that's going on. And she's not the best person in the world. She's not perfect as a leader, but I like that there's always this morality that she grapples with because she wants to be a good person, or at least she doesn't want to be a bad person. And so I love, she's just such a complex character. The next lady protagonist that I want to talk about is Decca Talent from the Gone series. She, if you haven't read Gone, which I feel like it was popular back in its day, but I also feel like it didn't get as much as it deserved. My dad just started sawing things. Why? So if you don't know what Gone is about, it's about these kids who end up living inside of a bubble where there are no adults, they've all been poofed out to the outside world and the teenagers are all just in there. It's only people 15 and younger, and so when you turn 15 you disappear and you don't really know what happens. Dekka's like 14 and she ends up developing gravity powers, and I just love Dekka so much. She's like this sun- She's very brave and she's always putting herself on the front lines for other people and she's not afraid to fight for other people. Oh my gosh, she went through a very traumatic scene in one of the books and I'm just now remembering it and damn, girl is tough. I wish I should go back and read them so I can more fully articulate what I'm trying to say about her, but yeah. So those are all my favorite badass female protagonists, but I thought it would be really fun if we played a game where we pit them against each other and see who comes out alive because that's the best way to celebrate Women's History Month, right? By making women go against each other. So I have a jar full of their names and we're going to pull them out and see who is going to make it out if they had to fight each other. So let's do it! So Kara versus Micah Halfwolf. Those are my options. And I don't want either of them to die. I thought it would be- oh no. Um, I mean, if we're being realistic, Micah does have the potential to literally eat someone. So. I'm gonna have to go with Micah for this one just because she does have more supernatural elements to her and all she's got is her resourcefulness and actually does she even really like fight anybody? I don't think she does. Next we have Dekka who I was just talking about who, reminder, has the gravity powers. And Inej Gatha, oh no. Okay, so a lot of this isn't fair because they have a supernatural element to them. 
and a person who like is just really good at what they do. Okay, so I'm gonna have to, go this is easier than I thought it would be because of this unfair advantage. But Dekka literally can control gravity, Inej is very flip floppy and she flies around, and so she may be flipping and flopping and then Dekka just goes like, and she's done. So yeah, I guess that's that. Although they would complement each other very well because she controls gravity and she's an acrobat. And so I feel like they could do a lot of amazing things together and they should go on their own heist instead of trying to kill each other. Next, Captain Ziala and Nina Zinnick again. Well, actually, I can't tell you because spoilers, but this is an interesting matchup. Uh, Nina is a heart render and therefore it eliminates any possibility that anyone would be able to kill her first, I feel like. Unless she is down and out, she got punched and knocked out. I don't see any way for Nina to not win a fight because she has the ability to literally stop people's hearts. So I'm sorry, Ziala. I love you to death, but you are going to die in this fight. Then we have Alana and Karu. Hmm, Alana versus Karu. I honestly feel like Alana is more, like she's tougher, especially if she's trying to protect her baby, she's gonna kill you. Karu, like I said, she doesn't want to resort to violence too quickly, she'd rather not have to fight at all. And I can't even imagine a situation where they'd want to fight each other, so this is a weird little exercise, but I'm gonna go with Alana. Then Kestrel Trajan versus Jane McKean. No, why did I do this? This is a stupid idea. I don't want anybody to die because I love all these women to death. Uh, Kestrel, like I said, very smart, super strategic, not a great fighter. Jane McKean, great fighter. She's literally been trained for this. This is like all she's supposed to do for the rest of her life. Um, so we're gonna have to go with Jane, but that is quite unfortunate because I love them both. Lotta, ooh, whoever goes against Lotta is probably screwed. Oh, versus Katniss Everdeen. Ah! I think Katniss is gonna die, but no, because Lotta doesn't know how to do anything from far away. Katniss, like she has, she's a close range combat person, whereas Katniss has a bow and arrow. And so, I definitely see Katniss, wow, I feel bad, because Katniss has been through enough. She does not need to be pitted against random people that she's never even met. But Katniss would win this fight, in my opinion. Also, I want to hear your opinion, so if you've read either of these books, I would love to know who you think would come out, and the same goes for any other of these pairings, because I could be very wrong. Maybe I'm just forgetting something super important about each character, and that changes the entire game. So, Katniss would win in this one, but let me know in the comments. Next we have Maurice, or Maris. And we can take that one out because I didn't see her. Oh, I actually forgot I did do a Throne of Glass character. I did Manon Blackbeak um, because I love her. I forgot to talk about her during this video, but Manon is a witch. She's the leader of this coven of witches and so she's got like these 13 witches that kind of back her up. She's got like this little team, it's really cute. Um, but also deadly, don't mess with them. She's another one of those bloodthirsty people though. And so she will kill you and she will not feel bad about it. And then we have Maris Boudreaux and while she is killing demons, I don't know if she's killing a witch with like super long iron nails and like pointy teeth and who has magical abilities. I think she has magical abilities. She might just have a dragon thing. I know, I don't remember if they actually do magic in those books, but I definitely think she is more ruthless. She will definitely rip out Maris's throat, which is unfortunate. Like I said, I love all of these women. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up down there. And in the comments, let me know who your favorite female badass protagonist is and how you feel about the outcomes of the pairings that I had and who would actually win. Also, just say hi. Tell me how you're doing. That's fine too. Make sure you also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me. And you can connect with me on Instagram at lalalovesLit or you can be my friend on Goodreads and the link's in the description for all that information. That's it, I'm done talking. Thanks for watching this video. Happy Women's History Month, and I hope that we are all loving and respecting the women in our life.